Let me ask you a question. What are your hopes for Al Quds? What is your vision for Jerusalem? What do you pray for Jerusalem? Is it a return to 1967 and Jordanian rule? Or the British mandate of 1917? Ottoman rule of 1517? The Mamluks of 1250? The Ayyubid dynasty of Saladin from 1187? Or do you long for a return to the Islamic Caliphate of 638? Or earlier, the reign of Herod, Alexander, Artaxerxes, or Cyrus? Or a return to the kingdom of David and Solomon? In its long 5,000 year history, Jerusalem has been destroyed twice besieged 23 times, attacked 52 times, captured and recaptured 44 times. Jesus was not the first and he will not be the last to weep over Jerusalem. The Bible tells us as he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, if you, even you, had only known the day that would bring you peace. But now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you. They will encircle you and they will hem you in on every side. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. Jesus' prediction came true in 70 AD when the Romans demolished uh, Jerusalem. They occupied it, suppressed the people, they wiped out the citizens. Today we weep over Jerusalem as Al-Quds, the old city, East Jerusalem remain after 56 long years under Israeli military occupation a military occupation based on segregation, on supremacism, on apartheid, a colonization that involves a systematic, premeditated ethnic cleansing in breach of international law, Geneva Conventions, and UN resolutions. That's why no country in the world except the USA recognizes Israeli sovereignty over Jerusalem. But what kind of Al-Quds do you envisage in the future? What kind of Jerusalem are we marching for today? Is it an open, inclusive city of faith? Let me be frank with you. Is there a place in your Jerusalem for Jews? For Muslims, for Christians, for those of no faith? Is there a place for Sunnis, for Shias, for Salafists, for Sufis? Is there a place for those who are born there? Is there a place for those who find refuge there? For those who have been driven out out of fear? What kind of al do you want? Perhaps instead we should ask the question, what kind of Al-Quds does God want? What kind of Al-Quds does Allah want? Because long before Jesus or Muhammad were born, God inspired the prophet David to envisage a city where its residents would be identified on the basis of their faith, not their race. Psalm 87 says, Glorious things are said of you, city of God. I will record Rahab and Babylon, and I know to acknowledge me. Philistia too, and Tyre, along with Cush, and say, This one was born in Zion. When you are born somewhere, what do you get? Citizenship. That's the Arabs, the Iraqis, the Iranians the Africans, the Palestinians, the Lebanese. This 
one was for an ensign. Got us to say it three times in three verses. Why? Because the residents did not want to share the city. The prophet Isaiah envisaged Jerusalem as a city where God teaches the nations, where swords are turned into plowshares, where spears are turned into pruning hooks. That is why Jesus insisted Jerusalem must be a place of prayer for all nations. If we wish to do God's will today, we will work and pray for our kids to become an inclusive city that reflects God's vision, a city of equality, a city of tolerance, a city of mutual respect, a city of justice, peace and reconciliation, not just for Palestine, but as a model and an inspiration for the entire world. Inshallah. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Reverend Stephen Sizer.